Hi friends. Um, today on Murder and Manicures, we are going to finish talking about Ted Bundy and do my nails with this set right here. So um, I am going to try to hurry and talk about Ted because there is a lot of info and we've barely gotten started. Um, so anyway, where we left off was um, July 14th of 1974. And on that day, in broad daylight, two women were abducted from a very crowded beach at a state park in Washington. Um, there were thousands of people there that day. There were a good like 30 or so witnesses. Um, but anyway, um, these witnesses described a young man with his arm in a sling asking if they if he if they would help him low unload the, um, his sailboat from his car so some of the women that he talked to um, and there were at least five people that he actually talked to that came forward but Four of them refused. Um, one went to his car, didn't see a sailboat, and she ran off. Um, so three other people saw him approach one of the women who disappeared um, and saw her leave the beach in his company. And then four hours later, another woman um, left her picnic with her friends to go to the restroom and she never returned. Um, police posted flyers in the Seattle area. There was a composite sketch um, that was in newspapers and local TV stations. And Ted's girlfriend Elizabeth, Ann Rule that he worked with um, at the crisis center, and uh, a Department of Emergency Services employee that had worked with him and a psychology professor um all saw the sketch um the car the profile everything the police put out and said oh yeah this might be ted bundy um but the detectives were like no way a clean cut law student would do that so um yeah he ended up going to Utah where he was accepted into law school. He moved. Um, he was still with Elizabeth at the time. Um, and disappearances and things started happening in Utah. Um, Elizabeth saw it on the news, uh, called the police. This was November of 74. She called the police. Um, and the most reliable witnesses um, failed to identify him in a lineup, in a photo lineup. And then again in December, Elizabeth called and repeated her suspicions. Um, well, the first time she called um, police in Seattle, the third time in December, she called police in Utah. Um, so they added his name to list of suspects, but there was no um, forensic evidence linking him to anything. So for the next few years, Ted, um, he lived in Utah. He was going to law school. He visited Colorado um, for whatever reason. He visited Elizabeth um, in Seattle because they were still together. Um, but then in August of 75, uh, Ted was actually arrested by um, Highway Patrol in Utah. The officer, um, there was a high speed chase. The officer searched the car. He noticed um, some things in the car. And then um, there was another officer or detective or somebody that recognized the description of Ted and a similar car from um, a kidnapping 
that happened in the year before in 1974. So, um, there was, they searched Ted's apartment and found some circumstantial evidence from other unsolved crimes. Um, they didn't have any su sufficient evidence to detain Bundy. So he was released. Um, and then they placed him on 24 hour surveillance. Um, detectives flew to Seattle to interview Elizabeth. And um, then in October of 75, the detectives put Ted into a lineup. Um, and the kidnapping victim immediately identified him. Um, so there was more than enough evidence to charge him with aggravated kidnapping and attempted criminal assault. Um, he had a $15,000 bail. Uh, his parents paid it, so he was released. Um, between the indictment and the trial, he spent most of his time in Seattle with Elizabeth. Um, then the trial finally started in February of 76. Um, he waived his right to a jury and a judge found him guilty. And then in June, he was sentenced to one to 15 years in Utah State Prison. Um, some stuff had been going on in Colorado. So they charged him with murder there. Um, and Utah was like, all right, you can extradite. So he was transferred to Colorado in June of, no, in January of 77. Um, so he, um, in June, he was transported to a courthouse for the hearing. Um, he was acting as his own attorney, so they didn't make him wear the handcuffs or leg shackles. And, um, uh, during a visit to the law library, he was not being watched very well and jumped out of a second floor window wandered around for six days and then he was recaptured. Um, and then, so that was in June on December 30th. Most of the jail staff, they weren't at the jail because a lot of inmates were on furlough and it was the holidays. And so they they didn't, didn't have their full staff. Um, so Ted piled a bunch of books and things into his cot. Uh, covered it up with a blanket and then crawled up through the ceiling, ended up in um, one of the jailer's apartments, and then changed into clothes and walked right on out the door. They didn't realize he was missing until the next day. So on New Year's Eve, um, they found out he was missing. Uh, he went to Chicago, he went to Michigan, he went to Atlanta. And then finally, on January 15th of 1978, he landed, I mean, January 8th of 1978, he landed in Tallahassee, Florida, uh, made it like about a week before he started attacking people. On January 15th, he um, entered a sorority house through um, an unlocked door. He attacked four students. Two of them survived. Um, detectives later determined that the attack of the four students um, took less than 15 minutes and was within earshot of like 30 people who heard nothing. Um, so after he left the sorority house, he uh, broke into another apartment, uh, attacked somebody else. Um, a couple days later, he stole a van from FSU, uh, went to Jacksonville, approached a teenager, her older brother stepped in. And so he like left. Um, and then he ended up in Lake City which is between um, Tallahassee and Jacksonville, ended up in Lake City. He uh, kidnapped a uh, girl from the local junior high school. Um, and then on February 12th, he was back in Tallahassee, stole a car and fled west. Um, he was stopped by police um, for the stolen vehicle. And then when he tried to flee, he was arrested. So eventually, he went to trial. Um, the venue was changed to Miami, which is about as far away from Tallahassee and Lake City as you can get and still be in Florida. 
Um, so the trial, he went on trial for the sorority house um, attacks. That was Kyle Omega sorority. He went on trial for that. Um, it was the first trial to be televised nationally in the U.S. Uh, he handled his own defense with court-appointed lawyers. Um, there was a plea bargain, but at the last minute, Ted decided, no, nah, I'm not admitting to anything. Um, so the last minute, he refused the deal, and he was convicted on July 24th, 1979, of two murders, three counts of attempted first degree murder, and two counts of burglary. Um, the trial judge imposed the death sentence. And then um, there was the second trial for the girl in Lake City in Orlando six months later. Um, during that trial, uh, Ted had found out that in open court, if you declare that you're married, um, Florida law says you're married. So... He actually married Carol Ann Boone that um, he previously worked with at the Department of Emergency Services and he'd been seeing her on and off as well as Elizabeth. Um, so yeah, during that trial, he declared them married. Um, on February 10th of 1980, he was again sentenced to death. Um, and then his scheduled execution was July 2nd, 1986. Um, there were some appeals for technical stuff um, and whether he was mentally competent to stand trial. Um, so after some like back and forth and whatever with the appeals, um, the Supreme Court denied a motion to review the ruling and they decided on an execution date of January 24th. 1989. Um, and so with no more appeals and after a decade of denying that he was guilty, Ted confessed to 30 homicides in seven states between 1974 and 1978. Um, it is unknown how many people he actually killed. It is believed to be more than 30. He is a suspect in a lot of unsolved cases. Um, so he died in the electric chair on the morning of January 24th, 1989. There were hundreds of people outside with signs and everything cheering. I actually remember this, seeing it on the news. Um, I was eight, almost nine when that happened. So I remember seeing it on the news that night. Um, and then in 2011, they found a vial of his blood and evidence. Um, so they loaded his DNA profile to the database for future reference. So hopefully the families of those unsolved murders um, get some kind of closure at some point. So my nails are almost done and I'm almost done talking about Ted. Um, I was gonna talk a little bit about whether um, serial killers are born or made. There is, um, Ted was actually, um, underwent multiple psychiatric examinations. Uh, the experts varied on what, um, he may have been diagnosed with. Uh, one of them, Dorothy Lewis, um, she thought that he could have been bipolar. Um... Let's see, and she was um, an authority on violent behavior, and you can find out um, more about her. There's, she's like a famous psychiatrist, who's testified in like loads of trials and everything. Um, but in 1987, when they were having the court hearings about his competency, um, she said that he was mentally ill, that he suffered from a strange childhood that was bound to produce someone incredibly violent. And he and other family members told the, told, um, the court that his maternal grandmother or grandfather was a bully and a bigot and he beat his wife and the family dog. And before all of this, um, you know, Ted never really talked bad about his family. Um, he said that he had a great childhood, you know, all that stuff. Until it came out in court later that that may have not been entirely accurate. So then, um, some people, you know, think that Ted Bundy is evil. Evil is a religious term. It's not a scientific term. 
Um, much like insanity is not a medical term, it is, you know, a term used in the court system. Um, but Dr. Lewis and her longtime collaborator, Dr. Pincus, who is a neurologist, identified three common factors in the most violent offenders, a predisposition to mental illness, and um, Ted's maternal grandmother um, did have some mental illness. She had depression and agoraphobia, and I forget what else. Um, especially psychosis, abnormal brain dysfunction, and um, horrific childhood abuse. So, um, Dr. Lewis now feels that Ted Bundy may have had disassociative identity disorder. This was, um, previously known as multiple personality disorder. Um, I'm not entirely sure if I believe that. I believe that, yeah, he may have had some mental illness. I'm not sure that it was a uh, disassociative identity disorder. Um, I feel like some of the experts that said it was probably antisocial personality disorder with traits like outward charm and charisma, the ability to distinguish right from wrong, um, an absence of guilt or remorse, um, that those things were more like Bundy. Um, a prosecutor said that he was more clever than crazy, um, and he was a mastermind at cl clogging the courts with appeals designed to help him dodge the electric chair, and I could definitely see that. Um, so there was, like, some other stuff about before he was executed, you know, he went on and gave an interview and tried to blame pornography for the roots of his crimes, and... He told other people that it was those true crime detective magazines that corrupted him and fueled his fantasies. Um, but, you know, he said before that he didn't read those magazines and porn wasn't really a, fact a factor. So he's definitely, definitely manipulative and kind of a liar. Um, but I, I tend to agree with the trial judge that he said that the court finds that both of these killings were indeed heinous, atrocious, and cruel, and that they were extremely wicked, shockingly evil, vile, and the product of a design to inflict a high degree of pain and utter indifference to human life. Um, so it's not just that Ted was good looking. I mean, I don't really think he was. He wasn't like a troll, but I think he was just average looking. Um, but he was manipulative and charismatic and he preyed upon vulnerable women and young girls and he did it while he was wearing a sling or a cast or something. So most people aren't going to find that threatening and he knew that. So anyway, that's all I have to say about Ted. Um, you can find out more on Netflix. There is Extremely Wicked, Shockingly Evil and Vile. That came out in 2019. There's also Conversations with the Killer, the Ted Bundy tapes that came out in 2019. There's the book Stranger Beside Me by Ann Rule. He was mentioned in Jonathan Douglas and Robert Ressler's books. Um, and Dorothy Lewis was also the focus of a documentary that came out on HBO Max late last year. And that was crazy, not insane. So, um, yeah, that's all I got. Thanks for watching. Bye.